Welcome back chemist. This is going to be the video going over lesson two, predicting products. Now predicting products is not necessarily anything new. Um, it is just combining some old things that we've learned and putting it into a new type of problem. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to make sure that you understand is how to write formulas for ionic compounds. So just as a reminder, like if you have a cation and an anion and you're combining them to write the formula, your charges have to balance. So for example, ammonium, which you'll find on the back of your periodic table, is NH4 with a positive one charge. Nitrogen is a capital N, and we know that because it's in column 15, it has a negative three charge. Now, in order to balance out our positive and negative, we're going to actually need three ammoniums. Okay, so that we have positive one, positive one, and positive one is positive three, which balances out a negative three. So when we write our formula, I put NH4, which I wrote three times, but if I just leave the three there, it looks like I have 43 hydrogens. So we put ammonium in the parentheses to show that I have three of all of that's in the parentheses. And then I have nitrogen just one time. Now please keep in mind that your cation is always what gets listed first and your anion is what gets listed second in your chemical formula. Um, if we look at another one, so for example, copper two and oxygen, the Roman numeral two tells you that copper has a plus two charge. Oxygen is O and has a negative two charge, and because a positive two and a negative two balance each other out already, we only need one of each, so it's copper and then oxygen. Um, and the last one that we'll kind of review, which by the way, there's a typo on my notes, so iron should have a Roman numeral one there. Um, but the last one is if we look at magnesium, which is Mg with a positive two charge, and phosphate, which because the ones that end in eight or eight, you know they're on the back of the periodic table, so we're looking for PO4 with a negative three charge. Positive two and negative three don't balance out, so if I add another magnesium, that ends up being positive four, and so then I will need another phosphate, which is negative six as a total, and then we have magnesium positive two again, so positive six and negative six, and so we have Mg, which we wrote three times, so we put a three, and then we have PO4 twice, so I put it in parentheses and I put the two outside the parentheses. So just make sure that you can finish the rest of this and um, finish it out um, on your own. Now the other part that gets reviewed is predicting products requires us to remember what we know about diatomic elements and the types of reactions. So remember there are seven diatomic elements and the prefix di means two. And atomic means atoms, so it means two atoms, elements that come in pairs of two. So elements that are diatomic must always appear with a subscript of a two when they are alone. So the seven diatomic elements are hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. And you can remember it by this acronym of have no fear of ice cold butterbeer. Um, you can also know that they make a 7 on the periodic table, so if you start with nitrogen and go with oxygen and then fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, you can see that they kind of make a 7 on the, based on their location on the periodic table, and then you just have to remember hydrogen off in the corner. Okay. Now, for our types of reactions review, remember our types of reactions are based on the five types that we learned in Unit 1. We said that synthesis is like marriage, okay? This is when you have two elements, or two people, that combine together to form one compound, so AB. And the key features here is that there is only one product. It's a surefire way to recognize when there's been a synthesis reaction. Decomposition is the opposite, so the opposite of marriage is divorce. And so in this case, the general reaction is also the reverse. Your compound splits apart into separate elements of A and B. And our key feature is that there's only one reactant. Now, if you're having trouble remembering where the reactants and products are, remember reactants are on the left and then products are on the right. 
when we look at our single replacement reaction, single replacement, this was the home wrecker, okay? Because remember, you have this compound, A and B, and it's doing just fine until C comes around. And C is a lot more reactive, and so it's able to kick out B, and now it's with A, and B is all by itself. Now, a key feature of a single replacement reaction is that there is a single element on both sides. So there's a single element on both sides, both the reactants and the products. In a double replacement reaction, this is the one that was named after the MTV show Wife Swap. Okay, This is where you have two compounds or two couples, A and B and C and D. And what happens is A and C, they trade places. Okay, So A and C trade places places. And so that means you're going to end up with CB plus AD. Now a distinct, uh, a defining feature or a key feature of this is that there are no single elements at all. There are no elements that are single. And a combustion reaction is like baby mama drama. And that's because they always blow up in your face. You always have fire and explosions. And so with a combustion reaction, you always have a hydrocarbon plus oxygen, which since oxygen is diatomic, it always has to be written as O2, and it produces carbon dioxide plus water. So our key features is that there are only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the reaction, and that carbon dioxide and water are always the products. Okay, if you have something else, that's the products, it is not going to be a combustion reaction. And so these are our types. So we're gonna combine what we know about types, diatomic elements, and writing formulas, and we're gonna actually use them to predict the products that will form. Now, when we're predicting, the most important rule is that metals, which are cations, remember cats have paws, so cations are positive, okay, are gonna swap with other metals or other things that are positive. And nonmetals, which are the anions, and they're negative, swap with other nonmetals, which are also negative. Okay? And so metals swap with metals, nonmetals swap with nonmetals, and here's our key. When we're looking at our three examples, we see that example one, this is we've got Zn, which is all by itself plus HCl. So this is going to be a single replacement reaction. We can see that zinc is the home wrecker. And zinc is more reactive than one of those elements. And so what you do is you split it up into your charges. When you have a compound like this, HCl, you're always going to have something that's positive and something that's negative. Now zinc is a transition metal. So normally you would need a Roman numeral or some other way to figure out what charge it is but it's on the back of the periodic table. So zinc has a positive two charge. Now, HCl, hydrogen, positive one, because it's in column one. Chlorine, negative one. And so what we see here is that hydrogen and zinc both have a positive charge, so they're going to trade places. Zinc is gonna kick hydrogen out. And so this means that you end up with hydrogen being all by itself, and zinc being with chlorine. Now when we write our final formula, we know that it's going to be H plus whatever our zinc and chlorine mixture is. Now hydrogen is all by itself, and it's also on our list of diatomic elements, so that means that we need to put it as H2. And then ZnCl1, okay? Chlorine, we need another one to balance out the positive two charge. So it should be zinc chloride with a subscript two. For our second example, this is also going to be a single replacement reaction because chlorine is by itself. And so what we do is we, again, split it up. We have sodium and we have bromine. And then here we have chlorine and we find their charges. So sodium has a positive one charge, bromine and chlorine are both negative one. Now earlier our single element zinc was positive, so it traded place with the positive. 
but now our single replacement is negative. So it's going to trade places with bromine, which is also negative. So now we're going to have Na plus 1 with Cl minus 1, and then bromine minus 1 is all by itself. So when we write our finished formulas, we'll have NaCl, because positive 1 and negative 1 balance each other out, plus Br2. Now the reason why we need the 2 there for bromine is because bromine is one of our or one of our diatomic elements. The third example, okay, notice there's nothing single here. There are no single elements. So this is going to be a double replacement reaction. Now, in a double replacement reaction, especially this type where there are polyatomic ions, you might not be able to see that it still splits apart into two things, the positive and the negative. Now, there's a typo here. That should be a K, not a KR. But we're going to have Ag and NO3, which nitrate or NO3 has a negative one charge, silver has a positive one charge. And you can check me because silver and nitrate are both on the back of the periodic table. Okay, and then potassium and CrO4. Sometimes you might just need to play around with how you split up the elements in order to know which ones go together. Now potassium has a positive one charge and chromium is negative two. And in a double replacement, your positives or your wives always swap places. And so here we have K plus 1 times NO3 negative 1. Then we have, oops, then we have AG plus 1 and CrO4 negative 2. So when I write my final finished formula for KNO3, it will be just that, K-N-O-3. We drop the accents. Sorry, not the accents. I'm getting tired. We drop the charges. Sorry, guys. We drop the charges, um, and it will be just K-N-O-3. And then for silver and chromate, we need another silver atom or ion to balance it out. And so we're going to have A-G-2-C-R-O-4. And we can see there that it's balanced and we've correctly swapped our products. So you've got some practice here and even more practice on the next page. So go ahead and enjoy. Uh, let me know in class if you have any questions.